Hey, White, she's coming back. Isn't that true right now? It's, uh, I guess, 707. It's going to be 70 degrees on Sunday, so they say. I don't know what's going to be in Boston, but whatever it happens to be, I'm glad that I'm here with Pamela Singer and Charles Alexander. I want to welcome you to the Teddy Smith with Bob O'Brien hour of our power hour and everything else that goes along with that. And you never know what can happen because every show is rather unique. Charles and uh, Pam, thanks for being here tonight. Great to be here. Thank yes, you, Teddy. Yes, uh, first of all, I just want to talk to you. Pamela Singer, you've been involved with some of the shows here with Tommy James and, of course, uh, Gene Cornish, and you've been here and been writing notes and so forth, and we see on the wonderful YouTube video. <laughs> and uh, you uh, certainly are a freelance writer, and you are also a senior uh, social worker at New NYU, is that correct? That's right. Uh, tell us a little bit more about some of your experiences in, in being involved with the Jersey Boys and uh, the whole the whole thing, how that, how that all happened for you. Sure. First, I just want to say, Teddy, you should really be ashamed of yourself for not having seen the show. I'm seeing it this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> you have to begin somewhere. We'll forgive you, though. Sure, I've been going to the theater since I was uh, five years old, I can't remember, and I've never had an experience like this one has been like with Jersey Boys. It's, it, there's so many incredible facets to the show, with the music and, you know, Frankie and the Four Seasons, but... You know, more than that, the show is really about family, and what's really been wonderful is really getting to know this fabulous Jersey Boys community, uh, the cast, the crew, um, the writers, and most of all, just the community of, of fans and friends that have brought us all together, including my good friend here, Charles, Charles Alexander. Charles Alexander, by the way, who is former senior editor at Time Magazine. I want to welcome you to the Teddy Smith with Bob O'Brien hour of uh, who knows what. But uh, most importantly, <laughs> uh, the Frankie Valley, Bob Gordio, uh, Mr. DeVita, and all the rest. Um, I know you've been involved with this. You've seen it, uh, Jersey Boys, I believe, 111 times. Is that uh, correct or so? Uh, Just need to move a little closer to the microphone, only because it's a live show, you know. That's right, Teddy. I have to admit to that. I enjoy uh, seeing how it evolves and how the different actors come in and out. But mostly at the beginning, I, I didn't know how long the show was going to last, but I said, well, if it ever closes, it's not going to be my fault. I actually love the shirt that you're wearing, a Four Seasons <laughs> Lounge. I mean, this is a I wonder if you get me a shirt like that. Uh, or Bob O'Brien, too, for that matter. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, official Jersey Boys merchandise. It's a bowling shirt. The Four Seasons <laughs> actually got their name from a bowling alley in New New Jersey. You didn't know that. Union, Union New Jersey. Union, New Jersey, home of Jim and Petrucca. There's a, okay. it's a, there's a very good scene in the uh, play about how they get their name. So. Yeah, I was going to wear my Four Seasons uh, bowling alley dress today, but unfortunately I had to go to work well, first. You're going to see uh, Eric Cara <laughs> or Joan Jett, who may come, or Pat Benatar, you can wear their shirt. Or it's That's a different true. Shirt, different shirt. But you wear the Jersey sh uh, Boys shirt next time. Sure. And what, what uh, Pam, inspired you to be a part of the Jersey Boys? And I know you've seen it so many different shows, and we could actually have a theater segment here at WPAT and have you star in, in the... Uh, theater segment that we spoke about last week, which would, would be rather unique. I think it would be really a real treat to have you here. Um, what, what about Jersey Boys really gives you that uh, charge? Thanks, Teddy. Well, I've been a Frankie Valley Four Seasons fan for as long as I can remember. I mean, I was born and raised in New Jersey, so any Jersey girl worth her salt would certainly <laughs> be a, a Frankie Valley Four Seasons fan. So it goes way back with me, but I remember the exact moment that I read about this show you know I remember where I was and I opened the New York Times and I saw it you know and just something really my heart just you know and it just took off from there um, I saw the show you know about two weeks after it opened and it was it was just phenomenal I can't even you know explain how I felt it was just unbelievable and yeah. Charles your relationship with Frankie Valley or well, the members of the Four Seasons. How did you get to meet Frankie Valli, and how did you get to meet Bob Gordio, and just maybe a little brief history right, well, about that, history lesson. Uh, I've been a fan of the group since I was 12 when Sherry came out. I was from, <laughs> lived in Tennessee, so I, I didn't have much proximity <laughs> like that. <laughs> <people, but laughs> even, even, uh, even people in Tennessee like Frankie Valli, and uh, so I was a big fan, and uh, all 
growing up. And then when I came to work for Time Magazine, after a few years I became an editor, and I said, well, uh, gee, I'm going to use the fact that I'm in Time Magazine to meet my heroes. And so I, I, I asked the publicists and got interviews with Frankie and Bob, not thinking there was any kind of story I could do. I was business editor. I wasn't even entertainment editor. But I, I went out to L.A. and I talked to Bob Gaudio, and he told me about this uh, partnership that he and Frankie Valley have. They split everything 50-50. Mm -hmm. If Frankie does a concert in London, Bob gets half the money. If Bob produces an album for Neil Diamond, Frankie gets half the money. Uh, it's, so I said, hey, there's an interesting business story here. So I wrote about them in Time magazine, and we've sort of kept in uh, touch ever since and been a lot of fun. I had no idea. When, when Gaudio first told me about 10 or 15 years ago they wanted to do a uh, Broadway play about the Four Seasons, I, I thought he was crazy. You know, they hadn't had a hit in years. Who who would go see a play about Frankie Valley? Well, I would. <laughs> well, I go first see Jersey. Well, you have it. First, but but uh, in the meantime, uh, Ch uh, Charles, uh, You've been involved with uh, the Jersey Boys uh, Coffee Table book. I know that you wrote parts uh, of right, that. Could right. you tell us about that? Uh, well, it was uh, very interesting. The bulk of it was uh, written by David Cody, the uh, uh, theater critic for Time Out in New York. I wrote the uh, intro and also the discography, but it's a, it's a nice, fancy book that you can buy at the show. Uh, I also wrote the liner notes for the cast album, which was, was more exciting. Um, Charles is like the godfather of the Jersey Boys community. I was going to say that, <laughs> by the way, how, how, did you, uh, how did you hook up with Charles, Pam? Um, I wouldn't actually use the term. Hook up as Charles' uh, wife is sitting. Wife sitting <laughs> how did you Charles' <laughs> wife is sitting, right? Who I, how did you, you know, very fond did of. Did you actually meet at the show, or did you meet Where at the production? Did or meet? How did you first meet? I think the first time we met was at a different show, D Daniel Reichert show. Daniel That's Reichert right. was the original Bob Gaudi on Broadway, and he did his... Uh, uh, a one-man show, and we happened to meet at that. The great thing about the internet is it's allowed all these Jersey Boys fanatics, as we mm -hmm. call ourselves, to uh, to get to meet each other, often by going to some of these other shows that the cast members do. So that's where we first met. But there's a whole group of people that are very close. From all around the country, and it's great. Um, I arranged uh, several brunches when the show first started, and we have people coming from California, from Florida, from, you know, from all over. It's what would you like to see happen with the Jersey Boys, or uh, I mean, as far as the Broadway show, or any anything with the group itself? What would you like to see happen? And, you know. Well, not only do I think it's going to play forever, but you know there is going to be a movie now. I mean, Charles can talk a little bit more about that. Um, they have a producer now, so certainly that's in the you know in the making. But what's also great about it is that the show has really spawned an incredible amount of talent. I mean, the actors, you know, the original cast is no longer there of the four leads, but they're, they've all gone on and are doing, you know, other things, and it, it's just, the, the cast is, the, sorry, the cast is just so talented, the talent runs so deep, and, you know, the cast has stayed in touch, and, you know, the fans have really followed the actors, you know, in new ventures. Um, there's a great group now called the Midtown Men, which the original cast of Jersey Boys is doing, and their their careers are really taking off. They're traveling all over, and uh, you know they've been great. And um, and Charles, you want to talk a little bit about the movie, or a little bit about anything that you want to talk about at this point? Well, a uh, couple of things. The movie is being uh, the producer is Graham King, who just uh, produced Hugo, which won five Academy Awards, and the writer of the movie is going to be John Logan, who wrote Hugo, So, and Hugo has done very well, so I'm, I'm very optimistic the movie is going to be top quality. Uh, I'm thinking maybe that means that it's going to be directed by Martin Scorsese, who <laughs> directed Hugo. Well, then you don't have to right. have yeah. the award, right? Uh, Absolutely. You know, what's, what's interesting, the, the play is called caused Frankie Valley to be hotter than ever. He's probably having going to have his bigger biggest year of touring this year in his 50 years career. He's going to Australia, New Zealand, uh, England, Scotland, uh, all over the 
Mm -hmm. And of course, all over the U.S. Are you going to visit with them in some of these countries or some well, of the I'm local gonna, tours? Uh, I'm not going to make it to Australia, but uh, my wife and I are planning to go over to London and see uh, Frankie and Royal Albert Hall. That's going to be quite an experience, I think. I mean, Frankie is still an amazing performer. I mean, this is a guy who's 77? 77. 77. Yeah. 77. Sure doesn't look it. He looks great. He's he in great sounds shape. great. He doesn't need to work, and he just absolutely loves performing. I mean, Charles has seen him very recently. I saw him last year in Baltimore. I mean, this is a guy who is just a consummate performer. You ever think of uh, you think of ever taking some of this experience uh, from the articles that you write and perhaps write a book with Charles about Frankie Valley of the War? The, uh, sure. The it it never <laughs> sure. comes to your mind to do something like that, being the fact that you're you're both accomplished writers or it, not? It could happen. <laughs> Yeah. It did happen. Teddy, I'm going to give you an exclusive tonight. You well, know? please do. I, I definitely could use one. You know, I, don't, I don't think this has been publicized anywhere, but I happen to have stumbled onto this information. You know, there's there's been Jersey Boys in, uh, in London, Toronto, Las Vegas. Uh, Chicago had it for a while. There are two touring companies going around North America. Mm -hmm. uh, there's Jersey Boys. The Australian company is going to New Zealand and it's going back to Australia. And I just found out the next frontier for Jersey Boys as soon as it's going to start in South Africa. <laughs> well, that's definitely a trip that I'd like to make. <laughs> and it's uh, that 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 uh, company is going to sponsor us over here, right, Pam? <laughs> sure. That cast, that new cast that they're just putting together now is uh, going to go from South Africa and make an Asian tour in. Uh, Singapore, Seoul, places like that. Sorry, I don't mean to put the microphone in your face, but still the fact that it's a, a live show and it could be who knows how the microphone's working tonight. I just right. sort of look at the board, and as soon as we're approaching the red, we're in good shape. So we're just about at okay. the red. We don't want to go above the red, but nevertheless, uh, <laughs> anything else before we go, at, since this is partly a, a music show, we need to play some music here. And uh, I, I w I'll say one thing about the, uh, in case people didn't realize that the first two cuts you the first one was the original Four Seasons. The second one was the Jersey Boys soundtrack. And it's amazing how well the show recreates how close it is. I mean, as a longtime fan, I was skeptical that it was even possible uh, to get it that close. But of course, the soundtrack was produced by Bob Gaudio, who wrote the songs and was an original member of the Four Seasons. So. I think that's the secret, that the show comes so close to matching the music. It'd be great if we could do like a show from the Museum of Radio and Television here in New York and have you be like on the panel and have Frankie and Bob there and uh, uh, all the people that are part of the show, part of the Jersey Boys. I think that would be a real real uh, terrific experience, at least uh, for myself. And uh, a live broadcast would uh, actually be ideal, I think. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> it could I'm happen. glad you don't agree or agree. Uh, however, let's play some great music right here uh, by, uh, I believe, the uh, Jersey Boys soundtrack right here, WPAT.